Welcome to TJ Cross Engineers Incorporated Oil Field Basics Training Series. Today we will be discussing casing vapor, tank vapor systems, hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide removal, gas dehydration, and natural gas liquids plants. These processes are normally associated with production typical of tertiary recovery methods found in enhanced oil recovery steam drives. Let's begin by first reviewing the operation for typical rod pump wells. After the well is drilled and completed, the oil and water will flow into the casing and then be pumped up the tubing into the production wellhead. This production then flows to the gauge setting for metering. However, in thermal situations, associated gas and steam will also collect between the casing pipe and tubing. This gas is known as casing gas. The gas will be produced up the casing annulus and into a separate piping collection system known as a casing vapor recovery system. We will discuss the handling of this stream in this training. In thermal enhanced oil recovery, hot steam is injected into wells to heat the reservoir and displace oil and water towards the producing wells. These wells will produce vapor into the casing, which consists of the associated gas from the reservoir and the condensing steam. Casing vapor is typically 90% steam and 10% gas. A good practice is to vent this casing vapor to a low pressure system so that we do not place back pressure on production. A casing vapor collection piping network is designed to gather gas from all of the wells to a casing vapor recovery plant, which is typically located in a low spot of a field. This plant is designed to cool the hot vapor and remove the condensing steam. The vapor is first directed to a slug catcher vessel to remove any liquid slugs. The vapor is cooled in a thin fan cooler to 20 degrees Fahrenheit above ambient temperature and directed to a suction scrubber for further separation of condensed liquids. The gas is compressed and cooled again to 20 degrees Fahrenheit above ambient temperature for removal of final liquids in a discharge scrubber. The produced gas is sent to low pressure fuel and the condensates are pumped to a production system. Next we will discuss tank vapor recovery gas. This system is designed to address the gas that evolves from hydrocarbon fluids at atmospheric conditions. Each tank must be blanketed with makeup gas or an inert gas such as nitrogen to prevent the introduction of air during tank inbreathing. Gas is introduced into the tanks at preset vacuum conditions to protect the tank against collapse. Produced gas from all the tanks are gathered together and then compressed and cooled for further treatment. Gas associated with thermal enhanced oil recovery operations may contain hydrogen sulfide, or H2S, that must be treated prior to combustion due to safety and air permit issues. Pre-combustion treatment options depend on H2S levels. Solid and liquid scavengers can effectively treat H2S levels up to hundreds of parts per million. Caustic scrubbers, liquid redox, such as LOCAT, and amine systems are usually required up to thousands of parts per million. In most cases, H2S must be reduced to below 4 parts per million. If H2S levels are above 10,000 parts per million, or if the gas contains organic sulfur compound such as mercaptans, then post-combustion treatment is usually the most cost-effective treatment. The sour gas is burned in a generator or incinerator, and the exhaust gas must be scrubbed of sulfur dioxide and other sulfur oxides, also known as SO2 and SOX. These methods may include caustic scrubbers, Brinks filters, and or wet electrostatic precipitator, depending on the permit conditions. Solid H2S scavengers are commonly used when sour gas contains no greater than hundreds of parts per million of H2S and excludes other sulfur compounds. The gas is directed into a series of solid scavenger beds to extract the H2S. The solid scavenger eventually must be replaced after they become spent. 
Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is another common inert found in produced gas which must be removed prior to fuel or sales. Common removal techniques include amine systems, membrane removal, pressure swing absorption, also known as PSA, or fast PSA techniques. In most cases, CO2 must be reduced to below 3%. In an amine system, the sour gas is introduced into a contractor, which circulates lean amine countercurrent to the gas. The amine strips the gas of the CO2. The rich amine is then heated in a heat exchanger and regenerated by boiling out the CO2 gas. Produced gas also contains water, which must be removed prior to sales or fuel use. There are several methods to dehydrate the gas. The most common method is glycol dehydration. However, some gas plants use temperature or pressure swing absorption units that heat or reduce pressure to extract the water, along with other constituents. In most cases, water must be reduced to below 7 pounds per million standard cubic feet. The glycol dehydration method is similar to the CO2 removal system we discussed earlier, except that here we are circulating glycol instead of amine. The lean glycol extracts the water from the produced gas and is boiled off in the still. Lastly, we will discuss the removal of natural gas liquids from produced gas. Gas produced along with oil is commonly referred to as associated gas. This gas contains propane, butane, and natural gasoline. These hydrocarbons are commonly removed from the natural gas in a gas plant for separate sales. There are various processes for removing these hydrocarbons. The process usually varies depending on the amount of natural gas liquids in the raw gas. For leaner gases with about 3 gallons of natural gas liquids per thousand standard cubic feet, a low temperature separation or lean oil absorption plant is ideal. For richer gas streams, a Joule Thompson or cryogenic process is more efficient. In most cases, natural gas liquids must be reduced to below one gallon per thousand standard cubic feet. A low temperature separation unit or LTS chills the produced gas to about plus or minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit to remove natural gas liquids. The gas is successively cooled using exchangers and chillers. The NGLs are removed from the gas in a low temperature separator and then stabilized with heat. These liquids can further be distilled in propane and butane columns for sales. This concludes our oil field basics training on gas treating. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact our process group for additional information.